my last rapid fire Q and A video was pretty popular. So I decided to do another one. I have a bunch of questions to answer for you today, but the first order of business is for me to sign one of my eight by tens. This one is for Dan. Uh, Dan is in Sweden and he says that he's appreciative of my YouTube channel. I'm appreciative of Dan. Let's see. Dan, uh, thanks for watching. And happy shooting. XO, XO. Thanks, Dan. I have a few more of these uh, up left. They're up on snapchick.com if you're interested. Okay, let's talk about the questions that I have to answer. Number one, are you your own favorite subject? Definitely not. I am, however, usually the most convenient. <laughs> Nature or people? Both. Favorite scenery? Definitely the Grand Canyon. Best way to get started in photography. Depends on what type of photography. If you just want to get started with photography in general, just taking pictures, whatever camera you have, take it out and start taking pictures and <laughs> just experiment. You know, go through your camera's manual, see all the different settings that you can uh, do on your camera, go to the library or, you know, research on the internet, you know, photography stuff and um, or watch my tutorials <laughs> and just take as many pictures as you can. Now if you mean that you're already a photographer and you want to get started in professional photography, that's a little bit of a different story. Uh, what I would suggest is to volunteer to assist uh, professional photographers in your area. If you are polite um, and if you live in a, you know, a fairly large area, there will be a ton of photographers that you can go to and like I said, if you're polite, you can get work almost every day. Is it possible to shoot great photos of models with a Canon 18 to 55 millimeter lens? Definitely. The lens is the easy part. The hard part is getting the right lighting and the right model and styling and everything else to work together. Um, I've shot with almost all of my lenses in the studio with models. Everything from my 18 to 55 to my 70 to 200 and everything in between. What are my favorite filters? Well, I usually buy cheap filters uh, to protect my lenses and you know, I just, I just take them off if they're interfering with the shot. Um, but for filters that create effects like, um, like a polarizer, my polarizer, um, I spent a little bit more money on, but I actually got it second hand on eBay for a song because it just had a little ding on the side of the ring. Um, I don't play favorites with brands though. And you know, like I said, I, pretty much uh, go for the cheap stuff when it comes to uh, filters that are just going to protect my lenses. And, you know, I just take them off if I'm going to be dealing in like direct light where it's going to affect, you know, the photos. So that's what I do. Do I plan to buy a Canon DSLR soon? No, I don't plan to purchase a Canon DSLR soon, but I do plan to borrow some soon so that I can uh, do some videos with them. I'm really excited about that. How do I deal with potential clients that don't value my work <clears throat> and when they try to bargain and go elsewhere? Well, what I do uh, with every client is that I show them a strong portfolio that I have um, modified and tailored to their needs. So they're seeing what I would do for them. And, you know, I, I work with them on price. I, you know, I give them whatever quote, you know, I think is, um, <clears throat> is good. I customize it for each, each individual client. And, you know, if they don't like it or if they're looking for something um, cheaper, I just refer them to um, a less expensive photographer. That's just my approach, though. What non-photography hobbies do you have? <laughs> I definitely stay busy. I am really active um, on any given day. I, I don't sit down. <laughs> I don't sit down that much. Um, I'm a little bit hyper. Um, I did, however, try knitting the other day. That didn't work out for me. <laughs> Let's see. How far to place my umbrella from the subject when doing portraits? 
With this, you kind of just have to experiment and it depends on the look you're going for and your model and you know your lights and everything else. Um, if you have the uh, light further away, you'll get um, a broader uh, spill of light. If you have it closer, you're gonna get some more focused, you know, concentrated light wherever you have the light pointed, you know, probably at the subject's face. Um, but, you know, depending on how far or close you have, you can really affect the mood or, and the tone of, of the photo because, you know, you'll either have the broad spill of light where you don't have, you know, as much shadow or you can have it closer and, you know, you'll get kind of a moodier look usually. Next, high speed flash sync, question mark. I don't use this often, really, if at all. Um, you know, maybe for a portrait in bright light when you need uh, a super fast shutter speed because, I don't know, you're using a wide aperture. Um, keep in mind, when you are using high, high speed sync, um, not as much light is going to be produced. So you probably want to experiment with that before you, you actually, you know, use it in the field um, so that you can make sure you're getting the results that you're looking for. I have a D90 and I have the chance to purchase a D2X. Well, here's the thing. The D2X is pretty poor at the um, high ISO settings. It is great. It is a champ in the studio at ISO 100. Um, it's really fast and responsive if you're doing like outdoor sports photography. Uh, but if you're doing anything else, um, you probably just want to stick with your D90. It's a great camera. Um, I have a D2X so I could talk a little bit of, uh, you know, trash about it, but, you know, like I said, it's great in the studio at ISO 100. It's really responsive, you know, if you're outside and you don't have to worry about, um, you know, increasing your ISO, but um, other than that, eh, just stick with the D90. Let's see. Pete is a bit frustrated because I've not talked about my MBA, um, like what school I got it from. Here's the thing, Pete. Uh, I just don't want to share that information. It's a great school, but um, I don't know. I just don't want to share it. I do have um, an MBA that is just, it's a general business management MBA. It's not specialized in any one area like accounting or anything like that. Do you like the film Happy Feet? I haven't seen it, so I can't say. It looks cute. Tamron or Sigma 70 to 200, any good? I've only picked them up a couple times. Um, I'm hoping actually to get to spend some time with them, you know, in the near future because I've heard from a number of people that both of them are actually really good. So I don't have anything to say on them yet though. What professions before Snapchick? Most recently I worked in finance and before that I worked in a number of um, offices, usually for smaller companies, and I wore a number of hats. I was always that person in the office that I ended up doing kind of a little bit of everything. Imagine that. <laughs> Me? Me doing all kinds of different things at one place? Let's see. Why did you pick Nikon? You know what? It just felt good in my hands and I liked the button placement and how I could move through the menus. That's just why I chose Nikon. 10 to 20 f 3.5 or 10 millimeter f 2.8 fisheye. Mm. The 10 to 20 is probably the uh, smart thing to get, but the fisheye sounds like an awful lot of fun. Would you be my girlfriend? <laughs> no, <laughs> but thanks for asking. <laughs> Have you ever bought an item of photography hardware like camera, lens, studio flash, etc., and found that you hardly ever use it? Frustratingly, yes. The first thing that came to mind when I read that question was my lens, baby. <laughs> I should use that. Uh, how do you get fast email questions answered? Or how do I get fast email questions answered about my camera? Oh, I know, be a, be a VIP like I am. <laughs> You're beautiful. <laughs> I just thought that was sweet. Command mode or wireless flash? Normally, I uh, actually trigger my strobes and my SB800s optically. Uh, for my SB800s, I use SU4 mode. Do you use a gray card, an expo disc, or fix it in post? When, when I do need to do um, a manual preset uh, white balance on my camera, like when I'm using my uh, fluorescent lights, 
I just use a white piece of computer paper. Um, I know that a lot of people insist that an 18% gray card is necessary. I am not interested in getting in that debate. A white piece of paper works for me for my purposes and you know if I need to I can you know correct a little bit in post-processing. Uh, which do you prefer on a DX body? 35 millimeter f1.8 or 50 millimeter f1.8? Both AFS. If I'm walking around, I would prefer the 35 millimeter, but if I'm in the studio, probably the 50. What editing software do you use? I am currently using Aperture 3. Best site for amateur photographer to post his or her photos for everyone to see? Probably depends on what you mean by everyone. Um, if you mean everyone like all your friends, I don't know, Facebook will do. But if you mean everyone, everyone, Flickr is a good one. I don't really play favorites with, uh, with photo posting sites though. Should I add a watermark to my photos before posting them to Facebook or any other site? I don't know, that's your decision. I don't do that though. Have you heard about the Lytro light field camera? I want to see your review about this product. Yes, I did see it and it is an interesting idea. Um, I do have my mm, questions about how they actually do what they say they're doing. Um, I don't know. I don't want to rain on their parade though. So I'll leave it at that. Is pinhole photography similar to lens baby photography? Well, actually they're kind of opposites in how the photo is actually made. Uh, with pinhole photography, um, you've got a teeny tiny pinhole, <laughs> which is, you know, a small aperture so that everything is kind of in focus. Um, the lens baby uses a wider aperture, uh, but you can tilt the lens since I have my lens baby here. See, uh, so they're different in how the photo is actually produced, but the results from both of them can be pretty similar. They can be kind of surreal and a little blurry. I dropped my 18 to 200 millimeter Nikkor. Ugh. It grinds at the longer length. The repair estimate was $200 for parts, $250 for labor, for a $600 lens. I feel like I'm in math class <laughs> reading a word problem right now. Um, okay, so this was a small Nikon approved shop in Boston that gave him the quote. Uh, would I do better getting an estimate directly from a Nikon service center and do you have a vendor you like? I've actually only had lenses serviced through Nikon. Uh, luckily, they've, I think they've all been under warranty, so I haven't really had to pay for any of them. Uh, but um, if you don't mind sending it out to Nikon, there's a form that you can fill out on their website and you can send it in and they'll give you a quote and then you can you know, decide which one you wanna go with. What was your first DSLR that you bought and do you still have it? I do still have it. My first DSLR was this D100. It's seen better days. <laughs> you may have seen this in some other videos. How tall are you? I'm 5'5". Five five. I know you like Oreos. What's your favorite way to eat them? I do like Oreos. I like them dipped in 2% milk. I realize that's a little specific for most people, but whole milk is too thick to get the right amount of sogginess in my Oreo, and skim milk is too thin. It gets too soggy, <laughs> so I like 2%. <laughs> I definitely need to add Oreos to my, my next grocery list now that I'm thinking about it. Classic sci-fi literature-wise, A Brave New World or I Am Legend? Hmm. Neither. Arthur C. Clarke or Go Home? Okay, not really. <laughs> That's kind of like choosing my favorite camera body or like my favorite child or something. Hmm. Um... Is it small f-stop that makes more depth of field or is it big f-stop that makes more depth of field? Okay, if you want a deeper depth of field, as in you know more things in focus in your image, you'll want a larger f-stop number, which is a smaller aperture. Remember though that different things affect uh, your depth of field in your photograph, like um, the camera's distance from the subject. So keep those, that in mind too. Which do you prefer more, studio type shooting or outdoor natural light shots? Hmm. That's kind of a toughie. I love to be outside, 
every day I'd like to be outside, <laughs> but I really like to tinker in the studio too. So I don't know that I can make a choice on that. What about SD cards? Brand class, is it important? Would you recommend one for my D5100? <sighs> Not really one. I have a few different brands and I've been happy with all of them. Um, if you are looking to do video or you wanna clear your buffer faster, I would go with the fastest card that you can afford. Do you ever sell old equipment or do you keep it as backup? Funny thing. <laughs> Every time I have ever bought a new camera body or you know other equipment, I always say I'm going to sell something old, and I never do. <laughs> I do, however, keep it as backup or you know some of my old stuff ends up on hazard duty. What do you use for external mics for video? I have a Rode video mic. Have you ever thought about having a guest photographer for your videos? Sort of a tag team where you and another photog get together to tackle a certain style or subject. Yeah, I have thought about that. Do you get much work because of your YouTube videos? Like, do you get models booking you to do portfolios because they've seen your work on YouTube? You know, usually I don't talk about it much when I'm first working with someone. Um, but with models, once they do see the website, I think they do get a little more interested because, you know, kind of, um, you know, it's more exposure for them. So it makes sense. What's your cat's name? <laughs> I am not sure how it happened because I never liked cats, but I ended up with two and uh, their names are Leroy and Mischief. That is it for my questions today. Uh, I do, uh, I did get another, um, a good email from Pete and he has a few questions that I'm going to save for another video, but, um, those are about setting up a home studio without a lot of space and working with model models and managing your portfolio and, um, you know, just how to, how to teach yourself, you know, the basics. So I'm going to save that for another video, but, um, thanks Pete for those questions. That's it for today. If you have any other questions, just post them as comments to this video and I'll get to them in my future question of the day videos.